Hey guys, welcome to this episode in which we are going to take undoubtedly the worst guitar that I have ever held in my hands and try to do something with it. How bad is it? Well, let's go take a look quick. Oh, I swear this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh. Well, first thing I see is this thing started off life behind the eight ball. It doesn't have any F holes, and I don't know what you're going to do if you don't have that. It tore up from the floor up, bent body, terrible paint job, nothing left of the neck and tuners. Flip it around here. Stuff missing paint missing neck separated from the body Benny and the jet starter kit somebody even relieved it of its strap button yeah that's about the worst ever what did I tell you that is bad um, it's one of those things I really had to think out because it's this far from the fireplace and so it is so bad that everything has to look like junk when it's done for it to look good. So, tell you what, let's make the body of it look real good. Now, oh, I don't want to ruin the secret. Let's go see what I did. Okay, guys, we are losing our light here very quickly. Uh, I have sprayed the top and the sides of the guitar with Chick Flick Teal. See, Chick Flick Teal. Now, I am going to use Satin Canyon Black to do this fancy job here. So, the trick to this, as you're gonna see, is we're gonna stay the same distance. We're gonna get ourselves set up. And when we spray, we're gonna be spraying over the top so if i try to spray right at this i'm going to get a very dark line so if i spray and aim just right over the top where the paint is deflecting off that way it will work better now i want to get myself situated where when i start i can just point and go all the way around and follow the curve of the guitar then i'll go to the other side and do the same thing so let me give this one little shake Hit it, notice I've got everything masked off and let. Look at that. What do you think about that? So we'll come over here and we'll do the same thing. Check me out. Now I've stood the guitar up on its edge. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna point to the right there like so come down the side like so and I will come along here like so and spray the camera stand so I've done the other side got this little piece at the top right there that I missed there we go I'll make sure we get all of the edges and the whole trick to this is to be pointing the right way. Okay, I'm gonna do something else on the back. Get a little bit here so you can always pull into it like so. The trick is not to get too much. A little bit shy, right? There, there we go. And I think we're in business. What do you think? Oh yeah, that looks good, huh? It almost looks as good as this Camacho 60 by 6 box in aqua and black. That's kind of chick flick teal. Do not covet this box. Anyway, it just looks too good. So I have to mess it up. Why? Because the neck of this thing that's under tape, it, it looks terrible. And I can't have a brand new body against what's there. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to mess it up to the point 
where it's almost as messed up as it was in the beginning. So that's the key. There's a fine line between really messed up and super messed up, and I am that line. Okay. All right, guys, we're back in the shop. Everything turned out as good as it can be. Um, I almost forgot the matchbook of the episode. I called up this one from Stovepipe Wells Village in Death Valley, California. I have been out there. I used to go out and look at the date poems at Furnace Creek. There was actually a time in the 1920s where they thought the date poem industry in the Coachella Valley was going to be a threat, so they took um, offshoots of some of the more important commercially uh, available varieties and built a grove out there just in case something happened. Um, I'm My life has been date poem, so that's it. But anyway, Stovepipe Wells Village. This is a desolate place and it's hot and miserable and I think that one will look good on this guitar neck when we're done. Um, we're at a point now where I don't want to give away too much because there's another episode, but I'm actually going to put a humbucker right here and I'm going to do that by using this piece of cigar box wood and it's going to attach to this and there's going to be something uh, hobo-y uh, up here, a piece of metal that will fit over here and we'll, we'll attach that to there uh, and it'll make it the kind of junk that I'm known for. But what we're going to do right now is this cannot look like the first day out of the factory. I know this paint job is something that the Fender and Gibson and Martwin people are going to be looking at to try to replicate, but we are going to rough this up and we're going to make it look like it's very old and worn, like it's been out on the road or on a train or something like that. So, so I'm going to take 120 grit and 220 grit sandpaper and I'm going to take a, a sanding sponge it looks like a sponge with sandpaper on it profound huh and I am going to rough up the work we just did and make it look worn out and old now why am I telling you this well because rather than film me moaning and droning and monotoning whoop, whoop, whoop. you like that yeah move over Eminem Anyway, you're not, you do not want to listen to me talk over sandpaper. My voice is like sandpaper anyway, but I tried to talk at the guitar and, and the paint didn't come off. So uh, toss that idea out the window. Anyway, I'm going to give you a couple little clips here that kind of give you the idea about taking a piece of sandpaper, putting it in your hand and following the contour of something. Again, not rocket science. Anyway, let's go watch me mess this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some... 120 grit sandpaper and some 220 grit sandpaper to do that and I did an episode about a desk that I'm going to give you a link to right up there and it kind of shows this technique where you're aging something uh, using different kinds of paint and aging gel and chalk paint and all that. But anyway, look for that up there wherever you see eyes you can click on those. So I want to tell you, they also make these sanding sponges, which are pretty good. But there's no um, mystery to this. You're going to take and uh, tear your sandpaper in manageable sections. That are going to kind of give you the trick to this is to make it uniform and to try to figure out where was the where. W-H-E-R-E -E was the W. E A R. So we know that if you're playing, this is going to be your arms going to be rubbing this. You're going to have this area here without a pit guard is going to be tore up. The top here is going to be more tore up than the bottom. So you just kind of think about those things. And I want to see that we're we're able to see where we can be in the camera. I think that's good. So I'm just going to take the rougher sandpaper and do that see not too much you just want the blue underneath you want to remember your arm is not going to be in here too much it's going to be right up there can we see yeah so we're just going to run this over like this now we don't want to go this way we want to make sure the wear here is where it would be I'm using that 
word wear a lot, so I'm glad. I see ya. What did you do? Why did you do that? But wait, there's more. I'm not done messing it up yet. Okay, so we've got a rag and we've got everything wiped down now. Okay, and I'm going to show you some magic stuff. This is called antiquing glaze. Now, it's um, water cleanup, which is a good thing. Uh, and a little goes a long ways. So what this looks like is it looks a lot like axle grease or something and you'd swear it was if you get it on yourself but again it is water cleanup. Now the trick to this stuff is you're going to put it on with a brush or a sponge or you could even use a rag. I used to work for a drilling company that wouldn't buy us paint brushes. We would paint with rags believe that or not. But you're going to work an area like this and then you're going to come back almost immediately and wipe the stuff off like so okay and then you're just going to keep going around and doing the same thing everywhere now you want to remember when you're painting stuff you didn't don't take cold paint and put it on something uh, or a cold guitar or a cold motor. You know what a cold motor is? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a link to one right up there. You got to check that out. But anyway, you want to make sure that when you're putting this stuff on, whether you're doing this kind of stuff or any kind of paint, you want to make sure that the, the surfaces are relative so you don't again put hot paint on a cold surface and expect that everything will work out. Now I swear some people using spray paint will actually put their paint in hot water in a sink for a while after they shake it up. So it sprays good because if you don't do that your tip starts to plug and that kind of stuff and that's not handy if you're doing something like making these phony sunbursts like we did on this one and then wiping it off wax on wax off watch it I might go kung fu theater on you now anyway you see what that did that made this thing look real dirty and dingy all right again reckon I'll have me some more of that paper towel mm-hmm all right Ooh, that's pretty that is so messed up that is beautiful this is on the verge of being glamorous let me tell you look at that Ooh. oh yeah what now? Oh, I don't hear that criticism now, right? Because it turned out awesome. What do you got to say for yourself, that screw hater? <laughs> yeah, I figured nothing. Oh yeah, the back. I'm going to do something else with that. You'll get to see it in a future episode. But this, face it, it looks awesome. Did I surprise you at all? Anyway, don't forget to give me a like. Subscribe if you haven't. You're going to want to follow this one through because if you catch the little clips on how this is made, you'll be able to ruin the surprise for the others when the big reveal comes. Watching my videos, all of them, is the key to knowledge. So, don't forget to, to look below, uh, down in the info area, I'm going to give you links to these products that I use so you can get them and you can be as cool as me. And there's always a book down there or, or something about a record that you want to know about. But hey, thanks for watching. All fun aside, I appreciate you uh, and your support. So I will see you the next time we screw this up even more than it is now.